Test, test, one, two, three. What's going on team? It's Ricky with Tactical Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having an amazing Friday and welcome to our free live trading session. Let's go ahead and get the day started. Market's going to open any second now. We got the NASDAQ market down 1% during the pre-market session. We are seeing slight signs of a resistance, but I'm excited to see which way and there it goes. Market is still selling off, meaning SQQQ is rising. Let's see if we see a quick change of direction right at market open. Here it goes. Let's see if we break below. So what I'm looking for is, okay, so a potential change of direction here. Let's stay patient. So I'm going to start small, 250 shares um in tqqq so that's going to be um right around 1680 as of now here it goes still indicating signs of an uptrend uh watch out for the moving average so again one of the things that I quickly want to talk about is by entering when we are still trading below the moving average, there is a greater form of risk. Just because I'm choosing to enter a position does not mean that you need to. I am not under the PDT rule, meaning that I can day trade more than three times within a five business day period. I'm saying this to make you aware of if you are under the PDT rule, it is probably in your best interest to be a little bit more selective. We are not necessarily making higher highs and higher lows. We are showing signs of a potential support, but it doesn't mean that this thing has to rally, right? So I can enter right now because it's showing signs of a support and if it gets rejected, I can sell my position and I'm okay, right? If you are someone that is under the PDT rule, then you need to be very, very careful, very, very selective, right? It should encourage you to be a little bit more selective um, and especially being able to manage that position size, right? One thing that we talk about all the time is a great way to manage risk is to manage your position size. How many times have you guys purchased a stock, right? You guys buy a couple of shares and or you buy with everything in your account and then things go south. Again, asking yourself a very simple question, was direction in your favor or were you hoping? Uh, as of right now, TQQ still selling off lower highs, lower lows, still getting rejected. What's up, what's up? <clears throat> All right. There we go. Testing, testing here. All right, you're still testing, um, showing signs of consolidation. No higher highs here, so there's no reason to add more to our position right now um, on TQQQ. As of right now, it's just testing and showing signs of a support. All right, here we go. So again, what I'm looking for is for direction to be a little bit more clear. It looks like we're testing that same resistance level, right, for TQQQ. And remember, TQQQ is a NASDAQ ETF. It follows the NASDAQ market. Uh, it's just triple leverage. My job here is to make you aware of the risk, right? Not just talk about all the great things about it, but just because I choose to trade it and or if I'm comfortable with that kind of risk doesn't mean that you need to be, right? Um, and the reason I'm saying that is I want you to be aware that it is triple leverage, right? If it's moving a little bit too quick for you and or you feel like, again, you would like things to be a little bit slower because you're just getting started, there's no ego when you're just getting started, right? There shouldn't be. I'm here to encourage you to be a little bit more selective. Maybe instead of trading TQQQ, you can trade QQQ. An example would be is this thing is down 0.8%, so less than 1%. TQQQ is down 2.4%, right? A little bit more, three times as much. Um, so again, my job is to make you aware of 
a safer and more conservative alternative as you're just getting started. So as of right now, we are testing the moving average um, as a potential resistance level. So let's see if we actually break above that. If we break above that, I would love to add a little bit more aggressively uh, to my TQ's position. Again, just because I add more does not mean that you need to. I'm making that very, very clear. Just because I add more does not mean that you need to. You always have to ask yourself, does it make sense? Does it meet your, meet your criteria regardless of what it is? that I'm doing. Again, we do host these live trading sessions every single day with our LPP team. But one of the things that we always encourage them to do is to not copy. You learn nothing by copying. I mean, use high school or college as an example. Yeah, maybe you can pass a couple of classes because you got lucky, right? But when it comes down to being self-sufficient and needing to do it on your own, right? This isn't a college class that you don't want to take. This is something that you potentially actually want to pursue. So there's no reason to try to copy. I want you to understand why. Why am I waiting for the break above the moving average to add more to my position? Why am I not buying more right now? Well, I'm uncertain, right? I'm uncertain that it's gonna break above. So because of that uncertainty, I then therefore wait for confirmation. So please, 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 please understand that if you actually want to be able to do this on your own, it's not about copying other people. It's about understanding why and why people are doing what they're doing, right? In a world full of problems, learn to be a problem solver. So, all right. Yeah, so the PMI report comes out in about nine minutes. Um, for those that are unaware of what that report is, that is the Chicago PMI report. It comes out, uh, we talked about this yesterday, 15 minutes after the market opens at 9.45 a.m. Eastern time. Um, it, it might affect the market, right? It might move the market a little bit. It shouldn't be detrimental to the market. So maybe for five to 10 to 30 minutes, we'll see a change of direction. But most likely the market will return to its true direction of what it, wherever it was that it was trying to head to. So can you explain the mindset behind getting in in TQs and not SQs? Um, is it because that we're going into the new? No, I mean, it's a day trade, right? So the, the position that I'm entering right now is a day trade. So I'm looking for an intraday play, meaning that I have no intention of holding these shares that I'm buying right now for longer than two day, right? Um, with that being said, I saw there to be signs of consolidation during that pre-market session, and I wanted to test. I wanted to test to see if we would show signs of a support and see signs of a reversal. A way to test this, did you see me, you know, I can buy, you know, 20,000 shares of TQs. Did I buy 20,000 shares? No, I bought 250 shares, right? A way to be able to manage your risk is to manage your position size. And the great thing about that um, is that you never need to be afraid to take advantage of an opportunity. I mean, you hear it all the time where Tesla right now is nearly at $100 a share, right? Amazon stock is down to $83 a share. Apple stock is down below 130 A lot of people are overcomplicating their investing. They're like, well, I don't know where to what to invest my money into because it's so complicated, right? What if the market continues to sell off? What if you just buy one share? What if you just buy one share of each one? It's not going to make it or break it for you, right? But it's probably going to just encourage you to take it a little bit more seriously. So then when the market does begin to recover, then you can act accordingly, right? You don't have to be scared to enter a position. You just have to do it in a little bit more of a calculated way. If I can go in with 20,000 shares, but I only go in with 250 shares, I mean, do the math, right? That's less than well, that's like 0.001% of what I could trade with. So uh, there's also another really good question. I just want you guys to be aware of this. You're pro you've probably never watched one of my live trading sessions before. Um, one of the things that we do is it's called the blind trading challenge. I don't need you guys to agree with me. I just want you to understand why. Uh, so I do not trade with my PNL open um, while I'm trading. This is just from my experience, but I know that our Learn Plan Profit group has said that this has helped them as well. By being able to see how much you're up or down can sometimes influence your decision to buy or to sell or to manage risk. I don't want there to be any, any reason on why I hold the position a little bit longer just because of how much I'm up or down. How much I'm up or down is completely irrelevant to the actual trade opportunity itself. 
If I'm up $100, if I'm down $100, if I'm up $1,000, if I'm down $1,000, I'm the only one in the world that is up or down that exact amount most likely at that given moment. So why would I trade based off of how much I'm up or down? This is when we establish the blind trading challenge. It's simply to limit the amount of distractions that you have when you trade. Obviously, there still has to be some form of rule. Well, again, right now I'm not trading with a very heavy position. So normally, if I'm trading with a much heavier position and or it, things really begin to go south and I have a heavy position, then at that point, I'm going to probably have to you know, either cross-reference and or manage my risk. And then I can show uh, the overall piano and see how much I lost or how much I made, right? But it's almost more of like a, I don't know how to put it into a real world perspective to give you an analogy for an everyday type of life, right? But the best way that I can put it is PL is often a distraction for a beginner trader, right? With how much you're up or how much you're down. Limit the distractions that you have when you are trading. Make sense? Smash that like button. I like that. Okay, so we are still selling off. And again, this is why we waited for confirmation. So you guys see right here, I was about to buy 1,000 shares of TQQQ. That would have been, you know, a pretty decent position size. Um, but we did not get that confirmation. And this is essentially why we wait for that confirmation, right? It's never about being perfect. You know, well, Ricky, what if, what if it does eventually break above? That's fine if it does, right? At that point, I can wait for confirmation. There's no reason that I have to enter prior to having confirmation with a super, super heavy day trading position, right? There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with having that position um, as long as you manage your risk accordingly. All right. <clears throat> Are you ever actually fully invested with your entire account size in a position? Um, no, not really, because I, I rarely ever feel the reason to be super heavily invested in any position. Um, and this is something that will come most likely with time. Uh, I can reassure you that that you know when you're trading, there it goes. Watch, oh. Um, if you often find yourself needing to be in with, with every penny of your account in a position, I don't think that's a healthy habit, right? We talk a lot about healthy habits, habits that you can implement today. that are going to benefit your future self. Um, if you actually think about it, when you begin to trade with, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars, you don't need to always have every penny in your account in one position, um, you want to be effective, right? You want to be have enough money that you take it seriously, but not so much that you become irrational and ineffective. Um, so, yeah. And again, that's just my opinion. If you find yourself to be someone that trades very, very well and is very, very calculated um, with your entire account size, great. You know, I'm, I'm no one to ever try to change something that is working well for you. Um, and just because something doesn't work for me doesn't mean that a deck can't work for you. And I'm very open about that, right? Just because I do something doesn't mean that you need to do it. I just like to explain why, right? We just explain the blind trading challenge. That's why I do it. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, you're an adult. I'm not here to convince you to do what I do, right? If you find it to be useful, then great. You know, I, I'm glad that I was able to be of value for you. Um, if I wasn't, uh, or if it's not, and you find it to be counterproductive for whatever the case might be, um, I respect that, right? You're your own person. We're all wired in different ways. And I think that's what separates the trolls versus people that are actually trying to learn is that you respect one another's unique approach about the market. It's not about a one way or the highway, right? Um, so when is the PS5 giveaway? Yeah, if you guys want to learn more about the PS5 giveaway, um, it's the fourth link in the description down below, but it ends this Sunday. So you have today, tomorrow, and Sunday. And if I'm not mistaken, today is double the points. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but great reminder. So what Ricky means is that he's built different. No, built different as in lengthy, but that's about it. Uh, PMI report coming out in one minute. That is correct. Sammy Solis, appreciate the reminder. All right, PMI report one minute. All right, guys, again, 
one minute market should be affected, uh, should be influenced by the overall PMI report. Let's see which way we go. So it comes out 15 minutes after the market opens. So that's 7.45 our time, 9.45 a.m. Eastern time. How tall am I? Yeah, I'm 6'4". I know you'd never think behind this little screen, right? That's always, um, but again, I'm, I'm tall and skinny, so it's not anything. It's like, oh, you're six. No, I'm tall and skinny, so it's it's not impressive, but yeah. Here it goes. Report is out. Let's see which way the market chooses to go. Hmm. Not really. All right, 7.45, but it's still trying to decide. Here goes. Watch the selling pressure. Oh, huh. 44.9 is what I am hearing. Okay, so ex expectation so expectation was 40.0 and the actual rep reporting was 44.9. So that's a higher uh, uh, PMI report than expected. We'll see how the market reacts. I've seen it go both ways. When it comes in lower than expected, I've seen market goes up, go up. Higher than expected, I've seen market go up. Again, this is why when people try to predict of like, oh no, I think the market's gonna do this. It's like, this is why we wait for confirmation. This is why we um, allow opportunity to present itself, not because we have an ego and because we need to be right, because the stock market, trust me, does not discriminate. It, it will humble any person. <laughs> I just saw someone's uh, comment in the live chat. Yeah. Um, I, would love, I would love to take a heavier position right now, but again, um, this is kind of like just a raw trading session, right? It's to show you that if an opportunity does not present itself, if we do not have confirmation, it doesn't matter about what I want to do, right? I need to understand and respect the current market trend. Um, so because of that, I'm just going to wait, right? There's a lot of consolidation going on here. There's really not much progress. We talk about that all the time. So learn to stay disciplined. It's very simple, right? Um, so I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, again I would, I would love to take a position right now but if there's nothing going on there's nothing going on and i have to i have to respect that so if it's boring for you uh then yes maybe the stock market is not for you right um there's there's really exciting days yesterday was kind of one of those exciting days where right off the bat boom right higher highs higher lows all that good stuff um but then there's days like this um that are very choppy unclear we don't know if we're going to sell off we don't know if we're going to you know push up so this is where we have to stay a little bit more patient okay there it goes came in better than expected 44.9 so this means that um you know uh that specific index is uh manufacturing index is actually doing better than expected at least that's what the, the assumption is So, how can I see you live every day? So again, you definitely don't have to. Uh, this is kind of something that I do maybe once every other month, maybe every three months at this point now. So I host one of these free live trading sessions. Uh, I do trade live every day, but that's privately for my Learn Plan Profit group. Um, it's not free. Um, it's a one-time payment. It's lifetime access. If you want to be able to watch me trade live every day, we are running our biggest sale right now, and that's that second link down below. Um, so if you if this is something that you would like to experience, especially in 2023 as you're starting the new year, it's the biggest discount that we offer. Again, like I said, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access. It's com it's designed for complete beginners. So if you're experienced, if you've traded before, um, and you're pretty well versed with the stock market then LPP is probably not for you, right? The course is designed for complete beginners. The live trading sessions, again, our focus is on beginners. You get access to the LPP Discord chat and you get access to the TechBuds HQ. So again, one-time payment, lifetime access, and it's $150 off right now, which is that second link down below. But if you do wanna watch me trade live every day, it's the only thing that I offer. I offer nothing else, so but yeah, good question. All right, let's see where we go from here. 
I need to take a step back real quick and I'm going to look at QQQ. So QQQ is a single leverage ETF. So anytime that you perform a technical analysis, uh, just because TQQQ is rebalanced every day due to it being triple leverage, um, it's never super accurate with, you know, um, previous patterns, right? Um, so that, 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 that's why I like to go back to QQQ to have a better understanding of what is actually going on. So we could see that based off of previous patterns, we have, you know, have shown signs of a resistance here, which is showing signs of a potential support. But again, patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't always have to. As of right now, market is more bearish than it is bullish, and we have to respect that. There we go. And again, just a reminder, I've entered with 500 shares so far in TQQQ. So it can be a quick little entry and I'll actually enter with 500 shares down here. So um, I don't mind. And again, I, I can buy 20,000 shares of TQQQ. So I, and the reason I'm saying that is I want you to take my position size into consideration. If I can buy 20,000 shares, but I only bought 500 right now, I'm buying in very, very small increments. There's no reason for me to buy aggressive right now. And because of that, again, I just want you to understand why and how I'm choosing to buy. So if you're trading with, you know, if you can buy a thousand shares, you know, that's like you buying 10 shares or five shares, right? It's just, you're just adding a little bit to your position, uh, knowing and respecting the current direction of the market. So I, I, I need you to understand the position size of things. So Uh, did you buy puts? I do not trade options. So that's another great question. Um, I do not trade options whatsoever. Uh, never have, never will. Uh, so please make sure that you are aware of that. So. Uh, what's your EMA length? Um, it shows, oh, I thought it would show here. Uh, it has a length of 40 right now, but I change it from time to time depending on how aggressive or how much mo uh, volatility there is in the market. So if I see there to be a lot of momentum and a lot of volatility, I will normally follow with a tighter EMA. So I explain that all in the course, the idea of, you know, the length of the EMA and when it makes sense to have a shorter EMA or a longer EMA. I just bought another 500 shares for those that didn't see. So I'm in right now with about 1,500 shares of my day trading position. Uh, Ricky should teach us to trade options. I don't trade options. And again, I just, I find them to be too risky for people that are just getting started. Um, and, and that's all, right? So if, if options is something that you want to explore, I am not going to be your guy. So if, I, I respect that if, if that's what you want to pursue, but yeah. Here we go, testing that same support range. We're still below that EMA. So again, still staying light with that position size. I'm still in with less than 10%. So if that's you trading with you know $10,000, that's like you buying a position with less than $1,000, right? It's still relatively a very light position and it's because direction still is not in our favor. I view TQQQ to be very oversold. That's my opinion. And that's why I'm choosing to buy a very small position size in it right now. You do not have to agree with me. If you want to short the market, I encourage you. Stick to your plan, stick to your focus. And I do agree that direction as of now is in your favor. There it goes, getting rejected by that EMA. So just watching this one video, I have learned a lot and consider myself skilled. I appreciate that. But again, there's there's a lot to learn from 
one another, right? So I'm first off, I'm happy that you guys even took time because um, I know for a lot of you, you guys have to wake up very early. And I really do mean that, right? I have to wake up early, but this is something that I do with my team, right? Um, so for you guys to take time out of your day to watch me trade um, just to see what it's like, I'm very grateful for that. So um, I, I hope that I do earn your thumbs up and maybe you could even just consider subscribing if you feel like we earned it. Um, but yeah, that's I think one of the things that I, I really do enjoy about the market is that it is very challenging and there's so many different ways on how to approach it, right? We all have our own unique style. <clears throat> So, hey, Ricky, can you check your Discord message request? I will, uh, cheat down. I will uh, check it after uh, this live session. How does that sound? Is that cool? My goal is to trade uh, with the size that you do. You should have a bigger goal, right? I mean, yeah, it's a good, good stepping stone, right? But just like anything, right? If you want to grow, it's kind of like growing a business. If you want to grow your business uh, to be able to, you know, to generate and or tolerate hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, you need to have a good system, right? A good system to be able to invest that money behind that business, right? So this is why we always talk to you guys about, it doesn't matter what you're starting off with. People get sometimes so offended or so insecure about, oh, Ricky, I'm just getting started, but I'm only trading with $500 or I'm only trading with $1,000. Good, you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna miss, gonna make a lot of mistakes for a long time, right? There's a lot to learn. There's a lot of mistakes to be made. All you need to focus on is the reason you're trading with a small amount is because you'll lose a small amount. That's good. Imagine being so so naive to think that, let's say that you just had a ton of money to your name, right? Let's say you just, ah, I can dispense $100,000. Imagine learning how to trade with $100,000. You're gonna lose it, right? Why not trade with 500? Why not trade with 1,000? And, and make the mistakes with that and practice with that, right? It's going to take time. All I ever would, regardless if you choose to work with me or not, all your focus should ever be is to learn from your mistakes. Implement progress. You're not going to be perfect. You're never, you never will be. But if you can implement progress over a long period of time, you, you, there's going to be a lot for you to learn. And that's good. You're going to get better over time. So... So I wish this free live session wasn't such an underwhelming day. I know. I, I want something exciting to happen, but um it's it's a slower day. I, I agree. So it's just it's it's what God's giving us as of right now. So I've seen you used um Used to own a GTR R35. What are the losses of owning that car? It's my dream car to own. Uh, I've made money with every GTR that I've owned. And I'm not just talking about I've made money because of my YouTube videos or anything like that. I buy and resell cars. And it's, I mean, you can watch any of my GTR videos that I've made about them. I always talk about buying the cheapest GTR. I've had four GTRs. Again, I buy and resell them. And I've made money on every single one. Uh, Nissan GTR dealership even crashed one of them. And I made money off of that one. Um, they bought it from me. But um, yeah, again, just like anything, you make money when you buy something. People always ask, well, how do you make money buying a depreciated asset? How do you think a dealership makes money? You think they're buying it for top dollar? Heck no, right? During any market, during any condition, there is always someone that's willing to sell it for less than what it's worth or less than what someone else would pay. Just like a jet, just like a plane, just like a house, and just like a car. Yes, of course, some markets are a little bit more challenging than others. I just bought an additional 500 shares, just making you guys aware. But just like a stock as well, right? During any market conditions, doesn't mean that it's always going to be perfect and sometimes are more risky than others. But just like anything, when there's a transaction happening, the money is made when you purchase it. So you focus a lot on negotiation, taking time to understand what something is actually worth and making sure that you stay disciplined enough to pay below that. Very, very simple concept. A GTR is probably a cheaper supercar i call it a supercar gtr was my dream car as well uh, and i would i would encourage anyone that if they've wanted you know if they have a dream car and, and a car that they probably won't lose a lot of money on um, even if you, your focus is not to resell it um, a gtr is a great car there's always great demand for it 
maintenance wise it's a nissan so it's still easier to maintain um, for my mclaren like an oil change for that it's like four thousand dollars an oil change even if you go to the dealership for nissan is like 250 dollars like it's much cheaper right at least it was 250 when i um back in what 2017 2018 yeah so all right we are still struggling to form these higher highs and higher lows Uh, does it matter what app I use to trade? Just started and I downloaded Mirror Trade. No, it definitely does not matter. So I personally use Webull. If you want to download the same application that I have, um, when you deposit one dollar, and again, you can have more than one trading application. So if you um, like the application that I'm using, it's free. It's available to everyone in the U.S. Um, and they're constantly updating their application. I feel like it's much more updated than. TD Ameritrade, right? So if you want to learn more about it, you can click the fifth link in the description down below. If you don't see the link, you can refresh the page. It's the fifth link down below. My Webull link, if you deposit $1, will earn you six free stocks. And it earns me one free stock. If you don't use my link, then I think you get two free stocks, something like that. But if you deposit a dollar, again, you get six free stocks. You get to redeem them. And if you don't like the platform, then you can cash out the stocks and then you can close the account you still get the free stocks. And I want you guys to know that. <laughs> what's going on, Josh? What's up? What's up? Ooh, Michael, I like that. 10,000 shares of SQs from 54.75 to 56.25. You must have purchased yesterday then, right? Because, oh, I guess maybe pre-market. That's very, very low. Congrats, man. That's huge. It's a huge trade. I mean, still 3%, right? 50 or 25, right around this area. And then 56. Yeah. About a 3% move. That's dope. So this is SQQQ. This is the bear ETF. This is doing the opposite of what we're doing right so it's holding above the moving average it's looking good right here so we're testing ema for this potential reversal so let's see if it actually ends up forming and forming those higher highs and higher lows and look at that so this is a great sign for sqqq a bad sign for tqs uh, so what i was looking for that um what i'm looking in favor of tqs for this one is for this thing to actually break below the ema for it to break below the moving average and for it to begin to gap down to those same pre-market levels, right? Um, the more that this thing breaks its support um, and the weaker it signs it shows, the better it is for my position in TQs. But again, it's still looking to be fairly strong. So this is why I still want to keep a smaller position in TQs. So 1.4% on the day on TQs done for the day. I like it. So again, even on red markets, right? There's still money to be made. It's just however you manage or mitigate your risk. So, as I, yeah, from low to high, that was about a 2% move, but we're still getting rejected by that moving average, which is why we're not stepping on the gas. I would love to buy 5,000 shares, 10,000 shares, but we don't have confirmation, guys. <sighs> Here we go. All right. We have 3,000 of you guys here, but only 498 likes. Wait, wait, wait. Have you ever owned a Porsche, Ricky? I have. Um, Pascal loves Porsches, and Porsche has a huge fan base, and I respect it. They're very, they're great quality cars, is what I've heard. I hated the Porsche that I had. Um, I had a Porsche D GT3 RS. I had it for about two years. I barely drove it. Um, I just, for me, that was a very expensive car for how basic it performed and looked. I don't drive on a racetrack, right? So I'm not in the Newtonburg cutting corners and needing a go-kart with 500 horsepower behind me. Um no, it wasn't too small for me. I mean, it was cool, but um, it just, to each their own, right? Everyone has their, I love McLaren and Ferrari. Those are my two favorite. I don't like Lamborghini. I have one, but I don't like it. 
I think it's less of a quality car. Porsche is a good quality car, uh, but for the money, I just would prefer anything else other than a Porsche. But that's just me. Yeah, but again, I know Porsches are absolutely insane. They have the, <laughs> yeah, what is it? It's not Newtonburg. It's I forgot. Uh, uh, Nuremberg. Yeah, well, I can't pronounce it. I'm not German. Sorry, I'm Mexican. It's, it's hard for me to pronounce that. <laughs> Nuremberg. Yeah, well, it's hard to say. Uh, does trading extended hours work the same way day trading during normal hours? Yeah, all you have to do is uh, you can't use market orders when you're trading during extended hours. And for those that are unaware, extended hours means pre-market or after-market hours. Um, you have to go with a limit order and then you just have to turn this on. So EXT hours, you just turn that on and then now I can trade You know, during that pre-market or after-market trading session. One of the things that you have to understand is, again, the focus, it doesn't matter what time of the day is, your focus is an opportunity. And if that opportunity presents itself during those extended hours, then great. But if there's no opportunity, then during extended hours, there's less, there's more volatility because there's um, less buyers and less sellers, right? So it's much more easy, uh, easy. You tend to see quicker moves within a shorter period of time um, due to there being uh, less activity. So just be aware of that. TQQQ dumping. Come on, Rebecca. It dropped about 0.1%. Smack, smash that like button, team. I like that. Appreciate you guys. I hope that you guys are enjoying it, even though it's a slower day. I mean, um, we're still covering some topics, right? I Again, I do apologize that it is a little bit slower. I can't control the market. If I could, right? I'd make it much more, I, I wouldn't even care if the market were selling off. I would close my position in TQs and jump into SQQQ. I'd love to do that, but it's not even really picking a side, right? Talking about progression, are we seeing much progress on the sell, you know, on the, on the bear side or on the bull side? Not really, right? We're, this is where we opened and this is where we're at. So someone right now is asking me, Ricky, why are you in TQs? Well, even on SQs, if you bought right at open, you're probably not up very much, right? Direction is in your favor, and yeah, moving average EMA, but there's so much consolidation that it doesn't even really matter at this point. I am Mexican, yes. My last name Gutierrez, believe it or not, it's not American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both of my parents are from Mexico. Okay. Uh, looking at SQQQ right now, and we're not looking too great. So, yeah, it's either side, right? Either side right now is, is not looking too great. It's fine. It's good to be aware of it, right? You don't. It's not about always being right. Again, some people get so offended, like, Ricky, look, you were wrong today, or ah, I was right and you were wrong. It's like, yeah, believe it or not, I am wrong you know, from time to time, and I am right from time to time. But when I'm wrong, I tend to have a smaller position, so my loss is smaller. When I'm right, I tend to step on the gas, um, and I tend to make more money, right? That's, that's the whole point of it. It's Position size is a great way to manage risk. I came up with this great analogy yesterday ready for this one you guys ready i need this video to get at least a thousand likes before i drop this analogy trust me uh, I, I got asked a good question of like ricky i just don't understand why you're deciding to buy tesla stock or apple stock and amazon stock right now they're like i know that you're buying a little bit of it but why even buy any right now all right so let's get this one to a thousand likes um, and then I'm going to give you guys that great analogy. Ready? It's going to be the dad analogy of the day. You guys aren't ready for this one. Ready? All right. Oh, we're at a thousand. Dope. Appreciate you guys. All right. So the analogy that I came up with, I don't know how 
I was making a quesadilla at the time. So again, just excuse me if, if this doesn't make sense to you. So the question was, why would I buy any, you know, I announced that I was buying, you know, $20,000 worth of Tesla. I was buying $20,000 worth of the NASDAQ ETF. I was buying a couple thousand dollars of Amazon stock. I find the market to be very oversold. I find them to be cheap. I know that the market can get cheaper, but I shouldn't be afraid, right, to try to take advantage of an opportunity. So the way that I view it is imagine myself as someone that's trying to collect water, right? If the sky is blue and there's no clouds in sight, there's no reason for me to have my bucket out there, right? The way that I view that is if the market's very overbought, you know, I'm already locked in in profits. There's no reason for me to buy up there because, you know, opportunity is not really presenting itself there, right? But if I begin to see clouds, right, just like we're beginning to see the markets very oversold, the market's cheap, I begin to see clouds. It's not raining, right? Market's not recovering, but I begin to see clouds. I might put one bucket out there, right? Just in case overnight or something, it begins to rain, I'll catch something. Not a lot, it's just one bucket, right? I have about 50 buckets. And then when I begin to see that it begins to rain, right? When we begin to see that there starts to be confirmation of that reversal, I'll start to add more buckets out there, right? Collect more rainwater. How good is that analogy? No? No? Is that not good, right? Because it puts things into perspective of like, when I begin to see signs of, hey, it might rain, I'm gonna put one bucket. Yes, you're right, having the bucket out there, I might just collect dirt, might just get dirty, I might have to wash it out again. But once I do see that clear indication of it is beginning to rain, then, right, I start to lay out my buckets. I don't need to lay out all 50, but <laughs> Mark is like, it's all right. L, Ryan gave me an L. So I dig it. I, I think it really puts things into perspective for people to understand of when it makes sense to take a light position and when because of signs, you know, or potential opportunity, right? There's clouds in the sky. It doesn't guarantee that it's going to rain, but it's a sign of rain, of potential rain, right? Um, but I, I just thought that that's where, you know, once it begins to rain and right before it begins to pour, I can begin to lay out my buckets. I don't have to lay out all 50. I can lay it out as, as many as I want at a time. But at that point, direction is in my favor. So we're making higher highs and higher lows. It's pouring, right? And then I can begin to lay out all the buckets. So no, you guys not like that analogy? <laughs> Your friends are going to ask you. So what did you learn um, during Ricky's live session? Well, I learned that when it begins to rain, he likes to lay out buckets in his backyard to collect rainwater. But again, I just I like to make these like quirky analogies to hopefully it just like be ingrained in your head. And that's what I've learned from my videos. The things that I have, the concepts that I've shared are normally, and they normally come from analogies that people find kind of like funny but at least you retain the information right and you can always kind of go back to that analogy of of why we're doing what we're doing so um it's it's just an effort but um that keeps things simple right <laughs> ricky yeah, how's the rain in az it on it it's a desert right so it rains a lot in a very short period of time and probably I don't know. It rains harder for a short period of time than it does. And I'm from California. Um, it rains pretty hard here sometimes. But California floods. You're right. I don't know. I haven't been in California. I haven't lived in California in a while. So since 2015. It's perfectly fine to that. <laughs> My neighbors think I'm crazy with 50 buckets in my front yard. Yeah. Order submitted on Amazon. 50 Amazon <laughs> buckets. Uh, deserts get one to five inches of rain per year. No, um, we definitely get a lot more in at least Maricopa County. So the Phoenix, you know, general area. It rains a lot. You can you can look at it, look it up if you wanted to, but I do not trade natural gas these days. I do not, no. Okay, so again, we are literally pretty much where we were right at market open. So I'm waiting for direction to be more clear.
You better boil that water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now we're getting into the specifics. Yeah, if you don't lock in profits and start bringing in those buckets, then you're going to have someone out there kicking down, kicking open all of your buckets. Oh, look at that analogy. It just evolved. That's not a bad one. Huh. Huh. Is that good? Is that good? Just imagine a guy going, pa, 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 kicking them all down. No? Okay, I'll stop. Yeah, you're right. I'll stop. Uh, Ricky, please make a video on how you use the moving average. I have it in the course already. So if you're part of LPP, I explain the moving average, how I use it for different time frames, for day trades, for swing trades, for investments. Um, I talk all, all about it in detail. That's the whole point of the course. It's to cover and fill in the holes that you have not, you know, for the questions that have not been answered for you, right? It's to provide, to condense the time that it would take for you to try to learn this all on your own. Do you need a course to learn how to trade? Again, and I'm telling you this as I offer one. No, you do not need a course to learn how to trade. It's asking yourself a very simple question, right? I mean, use 2022 as an example. How many mistakes did you make to try to figure this out all on your own? And how much more time will it take for you to actually do that? Or instead of needing to make the mistakes yourself, would it be more effective to condense the time that it would take by signing up and by learning from other people's mistakes, right? With the structured course and then the daily live trading session. Again, you don't need to, you don't need it. You can figure this out on your own if you're good at learning from your mistakes, implementing progress, all that good stuff. But if you're someone that would prefer kind of like a layout, a blueprint of the basics of you know, how to get into the market, what to look out for, the risk of, right? Common mistakes, then that's the whole point of it. So, um, yeah, just again, um, it. I, I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that we're, we're, I get asked all the time, Ricky, I'm a complete beginner. Do I need to sign up for your course to learn how to trade? Heck no, right? I will tell you that every single time. No, you do not need to, right? I'm not here to convince you to. I'm just, I'm here to offer it. And if it's something that you see value, then great. I'd love to have you as a part of our team, but I, I would never want anyone that's to join that might not feel ready, right? Um, and or if they don't value it. So I think that's a great way to put it. But if you wanna join LPP and you wanna learn how to put buckets in your backyard to collect rainwater effectively, um, then yeah, I would, I would love to uh, work with you every day, right? It's what we do, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access. And like I said, uh, we're running our biggest sell right now for the end of the year sell, and it's the second link in the description. Uh, there is going to be a gift uh, for everyone that chooses to sign up today. Um, again, you do not have to sign up, but if you've been wanting to, and it's something that you would like to start and get more into for 2023, uh, there's going to be a free mystery box with every order today, and the link will be provided for you um, once you uh, complete the purchase of LPP. So it's going to be on your thank you page. We're going to provide you a link and you get a free mystery box. And it comes with a free mouse pad. It comes uh, with a free flag, I think, a free trading journal, stuff like that, free Wall Street tea. So it comes with three or four items. You just have to pick your size and we take care of the rest. But um, yeah, just it's, it's, it's like a day trading starter pack, right? We get you your trading journal, your flag, and your Wall Street tea. So it's just a little. Um, end of the year gift. Yeah, <laughs> no, no buckets, no buckets. Here it goes. We're about to break above the moving average again. I can't stress this enough. Just because I choose to take a position does not mean that you need to. I'm buying 1,000 shares, which is equivalent to around $16,000 worth of TQs. I'm going to buy another 1,000 shares, which is equivalent to another $16,000 worth. Again, you see the difference where I was buying in very small increments, but one direction begins to be in my favor. Again, it's knowing knowing when to step on the gas. Watch out for the potential resistance right around $17 a share. So let's see if we actually form the higher highs or higher lows. Yeah, maybe after this video, I might have to come out with some TechBuds buckets, some LPP buckets, right? 
<laughs> oh, here's a, here's a, here's another addition to the analogy, right? Using the phrase of like make it rain. Oh. It's like kind of punny. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, you're right. I'm a dad now, so I can get away with these kind of jokes. You get it? Like make it rain like you're making it rain at the club. Making it rain because you got buckets outside. No? Oh, yeah, that was kind of rough. I apologize. I apologize in advance. Again, if you're choosing to join LPP, you do unfortunately have to tolerate some of these jokes from time to time. But hey, I'm here every day, Monday through Friday when the market's open. I'm here. So, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. They get better, they've been getting better. They can tell you that, they they were really bad, but it's okay. The reason I joined LPP was for the bad jokes. Thank you, Tom. Ah. No, I'm not single. <laughs> <laughs> right for Ricky, guys. Thank you. All right, same valid resistance that we have going on right now. So again, my job is to make you aware of these resistance levels. If you want to decide to lock in profits, great, right? Um, hopefully you made some money on this uh, quick little scalp, right? That's about a 2.5% move. Um, I'm not going to lock in profits, but again, just because I choose to hold does not mean that you need to. I'm not like other people where they're like, if I'm holding, you're holding. If you're, or if I'm selling, you need to sell. No. I understand that we are at a resistance level, and if you want to play it safe, if you've hit your goal, if you think that, hey, this is just too risky for me, then lock in profits. Never be afraid to walk out with that cash in your pocket, right? You got one bucket, but you wanted 50, but one's enough. Take that bucket back inside, boil it, and drink that clean, rainy water. There it goes. Little pullback for the boys. Boil it. You have to. You have to boil it, right? That's what people were telling me in the yeah, distilled water. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, you can get your pH strips, test the pH balance on that rainy water after you boil it. Be like, oh, alkaline water. I'll think about this. Another uh, evolution to my analogy. You're going to bottle those suckers up, go to a farmer's market, and call it rainwater. $10 a bottle. Naturally grown. Whew. <laughs> and then they're going to see your dirty bucket and they're be like, damn, I might catch an infection with that thing. Gluten free. <laughs> I like that. Ooh, that's a really good one. I like this one from Tyler. Uh, so Tyler is one of our LPP traders. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure, right, Tyler? Um, I mean, I know I talk to you quite often. So trading without a mentor is like collecting water, but not knowing that you need to boil it and then you get sick. Ooh. Look at that was a good one. That is true, right? Well, it's not. I mean, you can figure it out on your own. You're probably just gonna get sick first, and then next time, hopefully, you don't make that same mistake. But um, Tyler, that's a good one, right? You just make mistakes that you're not aware of, right? How can you know how to not do something, or to do something if you didn't even know that it was something to be done? W, Tyler. Big W, Tyler. Common Tyler W. Uh, hey, Ricky, what EMA and uh, SMA are you using on your charts uh, in that timeline? So I am using the 200 moving average and the 40 EMA. But again, just because I have my indicator set up a specific way does not mean that you need to. It is always according to what it is that you're trading and how volatile it is. I explain it in more detail in LPP. So yeah, imagine starting your day like this every single morning. Not every day like this, but sometimes it's 
it's more effective actually more efficient for both of us market rallies we trade it we make our profit we lock in profits and we go on with our day right 30 minutes an hour we're gone uh, but i think that's a cool thing right so if if you've been kind of lonesome and this is something that you want to be able to experience um you know on a daily basis then we'd love to have you so and again that's that second link down below so how many people attend your daily private live um i'd say like it's a smaller group, right? Because I only know the people that tune in live. Um, and that's about 1,000 to about 1,300 people uh, that are part of our LPP. And our, our group is, is smaller, right? So it, it keeps things a little bit easier to manage. So if you have a question, it's not, you know, our, our, ch our live chat, kind of like you're seeing right now, moves a little bit slower. If you have your question, I can answer your question a little bit more effectively, um, stuff like that. So uh, the main chat room in our Discord that can get a little bit crazy sometimes, right? There's a lot more people that are conversing in that. So um, it's better when it's not crowded, at least for me. That's how I see it, right? If I'm going to join something, it's one of the main reasons that I decided to go to the Polytechnic campus at ASU. There are smaller classrooms. I feel like with smaller classrooms, I can focus more, less distractions. So, yeah. So how long do you trade live with LPP? So it's normally a minimum of 30 minutes. Sometimes it can go to an hour. Sometimes it can go to an hour and a half. It all depends on market activity. Uh, but every single day, it's at least for 30 minutes. So anytime that the market is open, that's normally when it is that I go live. Some days due to my schedule and or if I'm traveling, I will have to change the time that I go live. Please don't get upset. It just happens. Uh, but it's very rare in the grand scheme of things, right? With the 252 trading days, um, very rarely do I either miss one and or not host a live session, right? And again, it's every day. You get access to every live session. You get access to every previous live session and every future one. Right? It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. If you do the math, even if you were to commit for a year after that discount, it would literally come out to be less than, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think less than a dollar a day. Um, and that's just at the year mark, right? We have people that have been part of LPP since 2018. At that point, you're talking about maybe 10 to 15 cents a day is what it actually costs them. So old live uh, streams are helpful too. I agree, right? You get to go back to a specific day. Everything's stated in our morning live uh, chat and you can go back to a specific day and see how it played out. All right. I would love to see some higher lows here. So again, what I'm looking for here is now that we're trading above the moving average, a question you might have or a question you should have is, Ricky, why are you not pouring into this stock right now, right? We have a resistance right around $17 a share and we're not making higher highs, right? There's no progression. That's one thing that you always will hear me talk about. Progression, progression, progression. If the stock is not progressing, why are you adding more to it? right? If it's not making you more money, why are you adding more to it? If I was fully invested already and this was going on, my focus would be to lock in profits right now, which is why for our beginner traders, that's why you heard me say like, hey, if you want to play it safe, we're at a resistance, don't be afraid to lock in profits. My, I'm in such, I'm in with such a light position still that, you know, I would love to add more. I don't really care too much about the 1.5% that I've made with my smaller position size. So I'm waiting for confirmation. I'm waiting to, to get to see progress. And if we don't see that progress and then it pulls on back, I'm okay with taking the loss of whatever it is I, I might experience. Um, but my focus is definitely progress, 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 uh, especially with a lighter position when I'm thinking of buying more. All right. Uh, what made you not lock in profits? My position size is still relatively pretty light, right? Um, you guys, I've seen when I've stepped on the gas or even just added my 2,000 shares. Um, I added my 2,000 shares when we broke above the moving average. Other than that, I had about 2,500 shares or less when we were below the moving average. So my position size is still very, very light. It's not something that I'm crazy about right now. Um so I'm not too worried about, you know, like I see there to be much more, much greater upside potential. Um, and if I get to experience that, right, or if I get presented that opportunity, I would love to add more to take advantage of it, right? The example that I can give you is, you know, if you bought one share and then it gapped up here and you, and you know how oversold, 
you know, TQQQ is, why would you sell that one share at that first sign of a resistance, right? People are so micro-focused sometimes on the small picture, they don't see the much larger picture. Obviously, I haven't added, you know, more to my position just yet, but I would love to. I would really like to, but opportunity has not presented itself just yet. So I'm trying to stay patient. It's difficult, right? Because it's the simple things in life. It is difficult. So do you make 20 to 60% profit per stock every day? No. Like other YouTubers. I do not. No. I mean, you can see it firsthand. I, and I think that's the great thing about LPP is that if I experience a loss, they get to see it and the mistakes that I made, right? And then I recap my loss. Uh, we have a, a group chat for within LPP group chat, uh, a channel called uh, Trade Ideas, and that's where I post updates. And if I take a loss, I post my loss there, and I talk about what I could have done better. I think that's the the whole thing about this is that not only do you get to see the loss, but you also get to see what led to that loss. And therefore, if it was a bad habit or a bad mistake that I made, then hopefully it encourages you to not make that same mistake. Uh, but no, definitely not 20 to 60 percent in a trade or a day or something like that. I've I don't trade options. I find that to be that to happen more often with options. I don't trade penny stocks. Um, I focus on Nasdaq ETFs, and then I have na you know stocks that trade under the Nasdaq. So I don't trade meme stocks. If you're looking for someone that trades penny stocks or pump and dumps, or trades very aggressive options, I do not do any of that. Um, my focus is to keep things simple. I focus on NASDAQ market um, and or as close to blue chip stocks as possible, right? Um, and yeah, I, I I don't have a risk, a very risky style of, of trading. Uh, I don't trade very risky stocks. I do from time to time. Like I, I, you guys remember I was shorting AMC. A lot of people got upset with that. I was day trading AMC when it was going up. A lot of people got upset with that because I was not holding it like everyone else. But again, I'm not here to please anyone else, right? We're, we're here to focus on ourselves. And this is one thing that you hear me talk about all the time with our LPP team is I want you to be selfish. I want you to do the opposite of what the AMC Reddit traders are doing. I want you to be selfish. I want you to focus on yourself. I want, to fo I want you to focus on your future self as, it, as you should, right? So I'm not here. To, I don't need you to hold a position for me or for a movement. No. You're here to make money. Don't sugarcoat it, right? You're here to get better. You're here to eventually make money. When you're first getting started, when you're trading with a small amount, it's not really to make money. Um, it's just to um, you know, build a good set systems, um, which later on, hopefully, you can begin to trade with more money and then actually make more money, right? And you're here for the dad jokes. Don't forget about that. Yeah, BBBY, we did, we did trade that one, right? Uh, but... Uh, I'm very selective with when I do choose to trade meme stocks or riskier stocks, and I make it very, very clear of like, hey, this is extremely risky. I'm choosing to trade it. This is what I see. This is the risk involved, and I lay it all out for you guys. I, I, that's just, I feel like, the way that I want to approach the market. There's people that choose to trade it as well, and there's people that are like, no, I, w I would never touch that. And I respect both sides of things, right? Do not put yourself in a position in which you cannot tolerate. <sighs> uh, thank you for the live stream, Ricky. Happy New Year's to you. Happy New Year's to you as well. So... Ah, oh, man. We're going to have to go a little bit smaller here because we're now back. Oh, no. Yeah. We're back below the moving average. So I'm trying to stay patient. Again, I want to buy. I would love to buy 10,000 shares right now. But, and yeah, I would love to hope, right, that it just takes off. Fingers crossed. But remember, we have to be a little calculated with our trades, a little bit better than we were yesterday. I like that. So, uh, Adex Clusivo, 
So that's good to hear that you're not making the same mistakes that you were, um, you know, before joining LBB. I'm really happy to hear that, right? And if it's just, if it takes a whole year for you to learn the importance of progress, then so be it. That's good, right? It's, it's a lesson learned. All right. Let's see if we can break back above that EMA or that moving average. There it goes. Another 1,000, just so you guys could see it. Appreciate you going live. I do agree, Jake. He is very calm. Yeah, well, when you do something over and over again, it's not that you become... I'm not super calm, right? I'm just... You become more conditioned to tolerate the stress that comes with the trading. You just become a little bit more conditioned with it over time. It's still stressful. It's still... You know, you still have your ups, your highs, and your lows, just like anything. But it's kind of just like anything, right? Imagine your, or think back to your first day at your first job, right? It was probably very overwhelming for me, like um, learning everything. Maybe the first time learning how to use a smartphone, it's very overwhelming. But now it's second nature, right? And sometimes, you know, maybe it might be like, where do I find this? But overall, you're just a little bit more conditioned under stressful conditions there we go still testing that moving average so if we go on the five minute time frame we should be able to see that we are testing that ema so one thing that we do uh, that i did want to talk about is that if you often find yourself you know this is great for people that are under the pdt rule if you often find yourself making impulsive trades or you enter too early especially if you're under the pdt rule um again maybe looking at larger time frames would be useful right so waiting for the um the break above the ema on the five minute time frame would really slow things down right so if we look at the five minute kind of like how we are right now at this point you would have only entered at these moments right and it's not even making really higher highs just yet so at that point if your if your criteria were to be i want there to be higher highs above the ema on the five minute you would have not entered yet which would have saved you the time or anything of you know entering too early so this is one thing that i love to remind our beginner traders within learn plan profit of to not be afraid to you know hold back be more selective, slow things down. And um, especially if you, again, often find yourself making these impulsive decisions, because I know I have, and I'm speaking from my experience. Um, I know often I, I tend to enter too early or too aggressive and the five minute time frame. some people use the 10 minute or the 15 minute, everyone has their own way, but just know that there are ways to be able to try to limit, you know, an aggressive entry or over trading very early on. So, and again, I'm, I'm just here to try to help you find a solution. And this will be the last thing that I say about LPP. You're not going to join LPP with the focus of trying to copy me or the focus of me telling you what to do. I will never tell you what to do and I will never encourage you to copy me. I'm here to assist you. So if you have questions, I will assist you in overcoming any challenge that you are presented by the stock market. That is my job here. That's how I view it. I'm here to share with you what I'm doing and why, explaining myself. But on top of that, I'm here to assist you in overcoming problems. I'm here to assist you in becoming a problem solver. People pay for solutions. And that is what I am trying to create of you to be a problem solver, right? So that's what I want you to understand of our group. We don't send out call outs. We don't send out alerts. We don't tell you where to buy or where to sell. If you're looking for someone to hold your hand or for someone to copy, I'm telling you right now, don't sign up. If you're looking to work with a team to be able to see and understand the thought process for both good trades and bad trades, then again, that's something that we provide every day within our live sessions. So the only thing that you can copy is my analogies, okay? So if you want to use the analogy that I used of the bucket and use it as your own, you have my permission. 
yep, give a man a fish and he can feed him for a day, teach a man how to fish and he can feed, uh, feed himself for a lifetime. That's, you know, the same type of analogy or approach that we've wanted to have with LPP since we started it. It is much more difficult. It is much more challenging because you actually have to put in effort. But again, nothing in life worth having should ever come easy. What goes on at the HQ? So our team is at the HQ. Uh, So Monday through Friday, if you're part of LPP, you can visit us at any time. It's just a co-working space, right? It's free to everyone that's part of it. I don't want to say it's free. It's included as a part of LPP. So Ricky, is college worth it? I enjoyed my time in college. I ended up dropping out my senior year, but I think just like anything, if you find the environment of being in college to be useful for yourself or your future self, then yeah or your future professions, so be it. Just because other people say that, oh, well, college is a waste of money. But, you know, for me, I really enjoyed my time there. I was focusing on my schoolwork. It was an environment where, you know, I, I view, viewed it to be like an incubator, where kind of like how my life is now with like entrepreneurship and investing, like my entire life and all my friends and the people around me, that's what my life consists of, right? And when I was at school, my life consisted of schoolwork. And there, there's something beautiful about that where uh, I didn't have any other distractions. So um, why did you drop out my senior year? I was starting my business and everything it is that I had going on. So I, I viewed the opportunity to start what I was doing to be much greater than potentially getting my degree. And I knew that I could always go back um, to get my degree if needed, right? It's kind of like a plan B. Um, but again, I, I wanted to go all in with being able to host these live sessions. I wanted to be able to go all in with my YouTube channel. I wanted to be able to go all in with the different markets that we were investing in. And I'm very happy that I took that risk. And just like anything, it is risky. I tried to do it in a calculated way. How did your parents feel about dropping out? Mm. I mean, they just wanted me to be happy and enjoy what I was doing, right? But even at 20 years old, even before I decided to drop out, I was already doing well. That, that was never their concern with me, I don't think. Yeah, and from an early age, I feel like, I mean, I began paying for myself. So that I don't think taking care of myself was ever really a concern. You say real things. It's important to always uh, to say the truth. Yeah. Well, wh- when are you going to retire? I guess you could afford to now. It's not about what I could afford to. I enjoy it. And I, I don't know if some of... I, I know some of you guys can relate to me. So I know my dad's the same way. Where... Um, I mean, it's it's not about like retiring because I can. Like, I I gain fulfillment in my life by staying busy. It's a weird way of thinking, but um, I guess it's a different way of thinking. But I know a lot of you guys probably have that same quality or attribute, where you feel fulfilled by how productive you are. It's a good thing and a bad thing, right? Too much of anything is bad, and sometimes it does get overwhelming where I don't feel fulfilled because I'm not very productive that day. Uh, but then I also have to remind myself that I have a family and I have to enjoy my life. But um, I I enjoy what I do and it brings me fulfillment. And people think that it's very complicated of what I do. It's I, tra- I trade every morning anyways. Me turning on a camera and speaking into a microphone just makes it more entertaining for me. It's just kind of like having a friend, right? I'm doing this already. I'm just now providing a platform to be able to watch it. Um, and yeah, sometimes there are stressful situations where I have to work with students a little bit more and I have life going on. Like right now, my daughter's sick and was hosting this free live trading session. The thing that I was most excited to do. No, not necessarily. Not when my daughter has like 103 fever, right? Um, but again, I'm, I'm in such a blessed position that, um, I've, we had enough people that really wanted me to host this free live session and I was happy to host it and, and, um, my daughter's feeling better is what it seems like. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm just like you guys. 
I'm figuring life out as I go on, right? Um, just because I do well financially doesn't mean that I am always ahead emotionally or physically or relationship wise or you know it's we all struggle with our our own challenges and i think that's the great thing about it it's that this is this these moments with you like during these lives it sounds corny but i love i love people seeing value in what we provide um and with our hq when I get you know testimonials through the LPP Discord chat of their profits, when I see things in the live chat, it does bring me fulfillment. It's like, hey, not just my work, but the work that you know my team is putting behind everything that we're doing, it's worth it, and that's what I enjoy. So, um, yeah, I have no intention of retiring anytime soon i'm 20 uh, i was gonna say i'm 27 but i'm almost gonna be 28 in two days wait 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 yeah getting old almost almost hitting that big three zero um but yeah i'm excited I'm, I'm starting to enjoy a lot more of the little things in life really appreciate you taking time to answer the questions of us noobs. Of course, we all start as noobs, right? We all start knowing very little or nothing. It's what you do to change it, right? You can learn how to figure it out on your own or you can join a team that you think you resonate well with. (laughs) Yeah, no, my birthday is on the 2nd of January, so I'm right after New Year's. What is your rental property criteria? I don't really focus on rentals. Um, I'm, you should probably message my business partner, uh, Nick Palladino from the House Flips. He would be a good person to reach out for rentals. Um, I focus would, my focus would have been more of like just House Flips. I can tell you criteria on that, not so much on, on rentals to cash flow. All righty. So my target to exit, yeah, let me explain that because we're not seeing much progression right now. Um, As of right now, again, I'm working towards even just getting to yesterday's support, and that's right around 1725. Uh, I would love to add more to my position. We just don't have that confirmation just yet, but that would be an additional 2.25%. That would be lovely, but we're not seeing those higher highs or higher lows above that EMA just yet. So again, until I get that confirmation, I can then step on the gas. If you're part of our Learn Plan Profit team, I will keep you guys up to date under our trade idea section of when I'm adding more to my position for TQQQ. Um, Again, if you have any questions, I hope that you know that you can always send me a direct message, even right now, right? So if you have questions about joining LPP, even before you join, um, that's that first link in the description down below. Or if you don't have Discord, then shoot me a direct message via Instagram, and that's that third link in the description down below. If you're ready to join our LPP team, again, we do have a mystery box for you that you can redeem at checkout. Um, That's going to be that second link in the description. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. If you have any questions please message me before you sign up um but yeah i mean this is this is a taste of what you get to experience every day and i would love to um give me a second i'd love to be able to do this with you guys if you see value in it so i just bought 2500 shares which is equivalent to around forty two thousand forty three thousand dollars worth of tqqq um yeah uh, stock market is very challenging it's very difficult it's one of the most challenging things for me but I think that's the beautiful thing about it is you always look forward to a challenge. I think the reason people don't like their day jobs on average is because it's so repetitive and so basic and it doesn't challenge them. For me, I'm, I get, I gain fulfillment from being challenged. So if that's you and you like the way that I explain things, if you like my trading style, if you like the way that I teach, then, you know, Let's, let's work together in 2023. So that's that second link down below. I appreciate your time. I hope that we earned your thumbs up in this video. I hope that you could even consider subscribing. Um, and again, if you have any questions, I can't answer your question if you do not reach out. Um, so don't be shy. Let's let's put in the work and, and um, 
Let's focus on simple progress. You're not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Markets are always changing. Let's embrace that, right? Get another 2,500 shares. So I'll see you guys in the uh, Discord chat if you're part of LPP. And once you guys sign up, second link, um, just join us in the Discord chat and we'll go from there. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note and happy New Year's team. Take care.